Hey guys, what's up? It's Gray. How's everybody doing tonight? Um, so this is a kind of a depressing discussion video, but at the same time, not really. Um, it's on the top five most saddest deaths in rock and roll. Um, so coming in at number five would have to be, um, uh, the man who played rock and roll himself. Let me kill Mr. from Motorhead, who unfortunately died at the end of last year due to a terminal brain cancer. Now, the reason that this comes in at number five is because, well, unlike a lot of the people on this list, um, we kind of actually knew that the end might be coming for Lemmy and Motorhead, just due to the fact that, um, they had to keep adjusting their tour schedule due to, um, Lemmy's health issues. So, at the end of the day, we, um, pretty much knew this was coming. Um, coming in at number four would have to be, uh, Kurt Cobain from, the, from Nirvana. Now, the reason that this is number four is because nobody really anticipated for Kurt to die. I mean, um... At the time, Nirvana really, uh, was just starting to, uh, make, make dent into the industry, and I think that if, uh, the, if Kirk and the other guys had stayed together, um, I think that they could have, uh, really went on to be just as big today as they were then. I mean, at the time Kirk died, um, the band still had planned. The band was still together, but obviously after Kirk died, that was basically the end of the group. Um, coming in at number three would have to be, um, Beach Boy Dennis Wilson's death. Um, now this one was sad because it basically, uh, took away the, uh, Beach Boy's feeling of, uh, being, being a band that truly encompassed the word family. Because, think about it, you got, uh, Brian and Mike, the actual flesh and blood cousins. Brian, Dennis, and Carl, the actual flesh and blood brothers. And Al, Al and everybody else, David and everybody else, the actual friends. So, if you think about it. Dennis dying, and Carl eventually as well in 1998, uh, really has taken away from that old mantra of it all staying in the family, as their dad Morty Wilson would have said. Um, coming in at number two would have to be, uh, Lane Staley in 2002, because at the time I think that Alice in Chains was, uh, really going to, I guess, actually continue their art streak that they may or may not have been on at the time. Well, not really continue the art streak, but maybe perhaps recapture the, recapture the thunder, if you will. Because, uh, the, the actual last show, touring show, that is, was, uh, on J July 2nd of 1992, and that was because of Wayne's, uh, crippling ha habit with cocaine and everything else. Um, now, obviously, he died on, uh, April 19th of 2002, which, um, basically put into the band until 2006, and then... Of course, you probably all know what's going to come in at number one for me. Um, it's the tragic and unexpected death at the end of last year as well of the voice of Stone Temple Pilots and Velvet Revolver Scott Weiland. Now, as I'm saying numerous times, um, Scott did actually die from a a drug and alcohol overdose, but also do a complication from a, from a weakened art from also years of drug abuse. Now the reason that 
that this is number one is because much, much like uh, much like most of the acts on here, um, I think Scott left the party before he was anywhere close to being done. So I hope you guys enjoyed that and um, stay tuned for more. Keep on rocking. Yeah.